This week on Fat Guy Squared, Anxiety Part 3. Yes, we definitely need drugs. Balls. Fat Guy Squared. Wait, you're offended? Go fuck yourself. Listen to something else. For those of you who want to be entertained, here's the podcast. Soothing sounds of whatever that is. And if you hear in the background, you can hear my dryer going. I really thought you were going to just put in a sample of a car crash. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, this is Fat Guy Square. We're back, and uh, we still have our special guest, my wife. Uh, this is a epic ending to the three-part anxiety episode. Actually, can it be four? <laughs> <laughs> This is now number 72. <laughs> How did he become Southern? I don't know. Um, so the first one we talked about was uh, just basic anxiety. Second one, we, we had a couple of scenarios, a couple of uh, possibilities of what would happen uh, through the course of somebody with anxiety. Uh, and in this particular episode, I want to uh, absolutely, we ended with uh, my wife belie- believing that I have some form of anxiety, <laughs> and we'll talk with that, but I also want to talk about ways of coping uh, with it, the ways that you, you, for lack of a better terminology, live your life every day. How do you make your life better knowing that you have anxiety? Um, I think that would really end this this whole thing no yeah maybe okay um and you know getting two different aspects because one does medication and the other one does not so uh not trying to talk anybody into going to see a counselor or what have you but maybe it might be the next possible step for you if that's what you're interested in i do the crack cocaine there you go (laughs) (laughs) all right so we ended the last episode with my wife saying that i have a basic form of anxiety because anytime stress happens in my life, I tend to... What were the words you used? Uh, You try to do the comedic episode. You make everything a comedy. Like when you're nervous, you make a joke. You crack a joke about everything. Because everything's a joke. No, No. it's not. (laughs) Sure it is. Because some of the jokes you make, people look at me and they're like, really? (laughs) And I say, I just ignore what he says half the time because I never know what... Give me an example. You probably would crack a joke outside of a funeral. I've done it. He's and done it. It's not a big deal. Um, so one example was when you're uncomfortable. Well, I don't know. Well, you know, you have all these things that I do. No, but you did me. it. I know you did it at my my mother's funeral. What did I do? You. I I remember. Distinct- you got to understand something though before you continue. Whenever you say I've done something. I don't remember. It's probably like you told him he looks sexy in his his suit. Yeah. Like you look like a sexy bitch or something like that. Yeah, but he As not- you're going through the line, give him a hug because he was crying and stuff. And- he, he is a sexy bitch. But that's the thing. You you knew you knew what kind of place it was, and it wasn't like you were trying to make light of the situation because you can't. No, you can't. You, you know, um, and you weren't doing it to be disrespectful to my mother or my father or anything. You did it because for a brief minute second you flip that frown upside down yes and you you tried to make it better for me and you also yeah i'm gonna say something here i'm gonna walk a line you as much as you're my cousin and we went so many years without it you genuinely give a shit about me not really yes he does oh fuck you (laughs) liar (laughs) and so for that reason you (laughs) saw me crying and you there was nothing you could do to fix that There was nothing you were going to say. There was nothing you were going to do that was going to change that I just lost my mother. So you didn't know how to handle the situation. So you tried to crack a joke. And that's what he does. Exactly. I'm going to be completely and utterly honest with you. I 
that might be the case, but generally, and my wife can atone this, attest this rather. I, I don't think about what I say almost every time I say it. Well, that's because you're dumb. That's true. <laughs> you're right. And I've lost many a job related to me saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. Um, that being said, I mean, you know, in the, those situations where, where there's death in the family or whatever, I don't see a death as a negative thing. I never have. Like when, you know, not, not to bring your grandfather, when he passed, when your mom passed, it's not a negative thing. They're moving on to something else. Well, my grandfather passed, he was sick. So that definitely was a blessing. Yeah, but his mom was sick as well. I think she had a, a pneumonia or something like that. No, she had food poisoning. Food poisoning. Okay, well, I mean, you know. And, you know, you guys, and this is where I think we differ. I don't look at the passing of a loved one as a bad thing. Well, because in your mind, what are you thinking? It's a, it's a better situation on the other end. Well, I mean, when push comes to shove, everybody's going to pass. So why are you going to sit there and be bad, be, be be upset about it? Celebrate that person for what they did in their life, not what you're going to miss. You you oh. have time with somebody. Oh. You, you, no, no. I, I I I think you are a definitely. Uh, you mistaken. haven't had a. He hasn't had a lot of people pass that were that's, close that's, to him. That's why. No, no, but that's but, another thing. But but again, you know. Okay, if you were to pass tomorrow, Nate, I'm not going to sit there and dwell on, oh, I'm going to miss him so much. I'm going to. That's not That's not a situation in my mind that I, I already know it's going to happen. I'm going to miss you. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to sit there and dwell on the fact that I'm going to miss you. I'm going to dwell on the fact that, hey, we had a lot of great times when you know, we might have not had a, I'm going to miss him because I haven't been with him for a long time. Uh, you know, And it's going to suck because we, we started to have a, a, a brotherly friendship. And, and he's, we're not going to have that anymore. Yeah, I'll, so I'll, I'll see if, that. If, but if, I'm also going to sit there and go, well, this motherfucker was a great salesman. I'm going to miss the fact that he was a salesman. But let's fucking, let's see the good times that we so had. You, so you're telling me if it was on the other, if it was your wife. I wouldn't want her to cry for me. I'm not asking that. I'm saying if your wife was gone tomorrow, there was nothing you could do. She was I gone. would be sad. You would be sad. And you're telling me you're just going to be like, well, she was a good mother. And she was a hard worker, and she was a, a I'm not good saying, wife. I'm not saying. You know, I, you, what I'm saying, there's. In my world, I'm not saying don't dote on the fact that she's gone. Now, your mother's gone. She was a major influence to your life. I get it. My wife's a major influence to my life. But I'm not going to sit there and, and, and dwell on the fact that she's gone. I'm going to sit there, and I'm going to sit there and go... Well, she was my wife. We've been together. We've been through a lot of hard times. But I, I refuse to let this make everybody else bad. Because when you go to a funeral, you're there to offset the headache of the major people who lost somebody to kind of get their mind off of it. I mean, that's what it is. You, you're not there. I mean, you're going to miss the if, person that's gone. I, I'm, I'm going if to. You, if you think that way. That's how I think then you are very lucky. Yes. Why is that? Because losing my my mother. I'm going to use my I mother. Yeah, I, here I, you go. I, I, know. I, I love your mother to death. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just trying to let you understand. Okay, from okay, okay. Losing my mother would be the equivalent of somebody taking your entire left arm or left leg off your body. I, I get that. So, Which would be if something happened to me, I think you would feel the same exact way he feels. I would. I be think miserable. you're coming exactly, and I think you're coming off saying that it's not. But you really would feel that way. Yeah, I think you're. I, I uh, would, but I wouldn't dwell on it, and that's the point. Yeah. I, I think you would. You would. I, I, I think you're I really making think very you light. I think you're making light of the situation. I really do think you would, because you always said, "God forbid, something happened to the four of us, me, my, myself, and the three boys, you would not be able to live." I, well, no, I would find the person that did it, and nobody would. No, live. but I'm saying no, I don't. But you said you would not be able to live without us. I, I really don't think I could. I'm, okay, so right there is exactly what Nate's trying to say right now. But the difference is, is that okay? Uh, You're not going to offend me. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not trying to offend you. I don't give a fuck if I do or not. <laughs> <laughs> my my point is, is that okay? If something were to happen to you that was caused by another individual, that's different. I wouldn't be upset in the way that you think. I'd go on a, a rage and end the lives of multiple people. Yeah, but say, okay, most of the time, like my, my grandfather was, before my grandfather passed, he oh, yeah. was sick. And again, he was he, sick. He was profoundly sick. He was not directly related to me okay. or in that. So I understand but where you're coming from. You also from. have to think about it. 
Nathan saw his mom the next day she's gone. I understand It wasn't that. like she was sick. She just yeah. passed away. Uh, but I could tell you honestly, with my mother, and we, we have our differences, I wouldn't feel that way. So let me ask you, I'm going to bring back to the wife, because the, obviously with the wife is a different situation. Yes. Because yeah. your wife would be the equivalent to be to my situation of losing my mom. Okay. Okay. So let's say that's gross. You call me his mother. <laughs> let's say. Come on, mommy. <laughs> let's say your your wife was coming home from work. Okay. She was tired. Okay. Okay. She didn't hit anybody. She hit a tree, and she was gone. Okay. I, I'd be upset about it, but I wouldn't dwell on it. I'm going to I'm going to tell you Yeah, but like when certain things came around or certain things that reminded you of me, you would be sad. But let me tell you the exact thing that in my mind right now what I would do. Now, again, this is not true life. Obviously, I'm gathering it would change, but in my mind what I'm thinking of doing right now is I would not dwell on it specifically to offset the loss to my kids. That's different because we have kids. But no, I, th- I'm telling because you what I, I would do. Because I can tell you what I would do. I would be positive to make it so the boys were positive if something were to happen to you. And okay. not dwell on it because I would want them to know that life goes on. Yeah. But if we didn't have kids, it would be totally different. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you. I don't, have that, I don't have that luxury of knowing that. I don't know. I, I mean, again, it, it, you guys both know me. And, and for anybody in my family outside of the immediate family that I know, there's nobody in my life. You know, I, I'm wrong. There's only there's only ever been one person I lost that I truly, truly missed. And she wasn't even related to me. I know who it is. And um, I I honestly, that woman brought me into her life, and I I was heartbroken. But but on the on the flip side, within an hour I was fine. But she was also old, not to be mean. But, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this, Pat. This is going to come across. I don't take I don't anything want, personal. I, I never want you to have to go through it, All okay, right. obviously. But if you do have to go through something like that, I hope to God I'm still a part of your life. Why is that? Because you're going to you, you say you're this. You're going to need him. You are going to break. Well, see, this is the point, Nate. And, and, and you I, don't I, like to need people. I know that. That's the problem. He doesn't I, like I, to need people. Well, I've never. He's been on his own since he was 16, so. I've never gotten anything in my life that showed me that I really needed people. Yeah, I don't. Give the a only shit. person <laughs> in my life outside of my wife that ever truly gave a shit was my brother. Hmm. And even then, at that point, that you know, he was doing it as a necessity. I feel and it wasn't. You know what I mean? Like, how are you going to put a sixteen-year-old on a fucking street? Whatever the case is, uh, you know, I love him to death for it, and I would never in my life say anything negative about him. I'm very, very. Uh, I, don't, I don't know the word. That was um, the best thing that could have happened to you, was no, your no, brother no, taking you in. I'm very... Um, Appreciative? Uh, wh- I keep things close. And, and if you say or do something, Confidential? You, approach, it, you approach that person and you do something, I, I jump down on your, I jump down your throat. Protective? Defensive. De- protective. I'm very protective of very few things. Yeah. My family being one of them. One of my best friends said something in a drunken rage, and I said to him flat out, take it back. And he this was just... When I was a teenager. No, you were 21. I was a teenager, according to you. Um, and I, I flat out thought I was going to jail because I, I well, that's, did things. To him. That's the thing. I don't think so. Everybody handles a loss differently. Okay. Why? I, why, why I'm sorry. We're we supposed to be doing anxiety. Yeah. We're not, well, we're okay. gonna get to that. Okay. We're gonna get to that. So everybody deals with loss differently. I, you know, my father being the way he is, this <laughs> changed him. Mentally, I'm saying with you, you and your personality. Okay. If something like that was to happen, um, and say she was gone, uh, and it had nothing to do with anybody else, just her, just, just her, something happened. You, her, her being my wife. Yes, her okay. being your wife. Uh, you, I, if somebody's gonna cross you the wrong way, and you're gonna snap, you're somebody's gonna, gonna make a comment about could be nothing. But because of that, you are so on edge. I, I, I can't tell I, you. And you will snap. I really don't think I'd be that guy. Yeah, you will Bull snap. Shit. I, know I, your, I don't. I know your temper. You would snap. Oh, don't get me wrong. I go from zero to a thousand. But in, in those situations, I mean, again, she's gone. What can I do? And, and this is where, I, I mean, I'm trying to defend myself against 
two people that are very anxious, and you guys have different feelings towards things. Well, that's and my, th- my point to you is, okay, let me put it to you in this aspect. Lynn were to pass away tomorrow. Mm-hmm. For you, how would you deal with it? Would you be broken? Would you be, would you be completely and utterly unable to live your life? If Lynn passed. If Lynn passed tomorrow. The own, my life would change. How? Because I would be, at that point, worried sick about you. Exactly. See, that I, I don't, and maybe I'm... I've Liar. Gotta, Liar. I, I honestly don't think I have that, that like, okay. When his your, mom... Your, 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 sis, your sister's husband were to pass tomorrow. Yeah. I'd feel bad, but I don't know how it, I wouldn't really... I, for you, it wouldn't face. For me, it would. But you would be there to support Nathan. Oh, without a doubt. But again... We're talking about how I would deal with it. I would I deal with it strictly because I'm trying to make the person who's at f- so all right not not at fault but um, at loss at loss. I, I don't I for instance I don't know you guys on your personal life. When my mother passed, okay, you came into my life. I did it, and I told my and I'll tell you right now the reason why I did it is because I honestly thought that you weren't gonna last. You're right. You're right. But so my you point, went and you supported him. Exactly. My point was you, at some point. But I wasn't there for your mother's sake. I was there for your I know. sake. I know that. That's what I just said. Exactly. If Lynn passed, oh, I, I, I would be there I didn't for you. Hear that. I'm so sorry, with I didn't my mother, that. what I'm saying is you you knew my mother. You liked my mother. I, no, I you loved have your no, mother to death. I felt bad that she was gone, and I remembered all the good times, but I didn't dwell on the bad stuff. Exactly. I agree. I'm 100% for you on that. But your concern when my mom passed wasn't necessarily my mom's passing. It was me. That that's, was your concern. That's all I was concerned with. And I'm sure that when you came home, I wasn't even around. I'm sure you talked to Lynn about it and said, I'm going to have to do something. He's, yeah, he called you right away. So that's why I'm saying if something happened to something to someone like your wife or your brother or your mother, even though whatever problems may occur, I can honestly tell you, you I, outside um, of my brother, I can honestly tell you, my brother and my wife. Let me tell you. Okay. It changes when it actually happens. It, it won't though. If it doesn't, then I'm in a bad. I'm happy for you. I I, you know, <laughs> I I have so much bad blood with my family. It wouldn't change. I can see that, but just from a personal point of view, what he's trying to say is, if it was me, the boys, or your brother. It would change you. Uh, I, I, you know what? If you were to use the example of my children, we would be having a completely different conversation. Well, this is going to sound really bad. No, d- dude. If okay, uh, folks, this is an open conversation. Nobody okay. is to leave this room taking anything personal. No. I'm saying it right if now. Your, if your kid, one of your kids passed, I would be not as concerned for you as okay. I would be for you if your wife passed. I say that one more time. If one of your kids passed away, all right. Okay, obviously, I would never want that. But if one of your kids passed away, I would be I would be less concerned with that than if your wife passed. Because he has me to lean exactly. on, and you would live for the other boys to try to teach them that the oh, boys that, 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 that it would be right. okay I, I to miss, still live. I misunderstood what you were saying. But if now your I get kids it. pass, your wife can fix the situation as much well, as she well, can. Well, not really. I think she'd shut down. Just for, I yeah. would shut down. Yeah, but you guys. But you would work be together. My, you would exactly. have a team. You would have me to lean on. I would I, have that, you to lean I, on. And I, I got that. I, I understand that. And you know, and, and Amber came into your life at the exact right time after the fact. What, when you when you're able to, to grieve appropriately and start anew, and you you know that was great for you. 2018 was the best and worst year of my life. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't disagree with you. I wouldn't disagree with it. Now that being said, let's get off the subject of people passing because yeah, I don't like I mean, talking about it. <laughs> yeah, no. That's... But the reason why I wanted to bring that up is just because, just like anxiety, there are certain things that are out of our control, like and, that. And that's and, and that's my belief in life. I and, and I, I, my wife will absolutely tell you what my process is: is what's the worst that happens? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And I don't dwell on anything. I don't care enough about it to dwell on it, outside of my kids, uh, my kids, and and trying to maintain a proper lifestyle until they can be on their own and do their own thing. I don't care. I, I never have. You know, it's weird um, because I look at it, and with death, I say I'm not going to deal with. It. 
Like, I act like it didn't happen. Okay. I wish I could do that with anxiety. See, I do that with everything. <laughs> it, it, yeah, my, but that's something you can turn off. The the death part. You can turn that off. But well, anxiety, yeah. you can't turn but, on and but turn why, off. But why can't you take the cue from the death thing and do it exactly for anxiety? Because a lot of the times it's, um, what do I want to say? It's not, it's not something you're in your control. It automatically happens. Yeah. Like I, you I can't just stop but it. You, you don't have death in control, but it automatically happens. But there's a way you can stop like the grieving process and you can stop that. But when anxiety starts, just like I said, sometimes I'll pick a fight with you. If I'm, my anxiety is going, I could pick a fight with you and I know it's going to piss you off, but it's because I want to be left alone or yeah. before I tell you. And, but I can sh- feel my body changing, but I can't stop it. Now, how do you know that that's anxiety and not like a depression or something along those lines? Oh, oh! Well, the difference between anxiety and depression. See, I, that's that's another question. I so, mean, like, I th- like when she locks herself in the bedroom, the windows are closed. The you know the the, the blinds are closed, and I mean that that looks like to me as a person that doesn't have this, it looks like she's depressed. I think it would. I, for me, this is. I, I think. Uh, the difference is the time frame. What, what do you mean? Well, anxiety frame? is something you, you fight with for a short t- time period, whether an hour or two hours, three hours. Okay, so three days later when I try to go in, I would feel that's, go fuck that's myself. A, I feel like that would be <laughs> I've never been locked in that vibe. It's usually a few hours. Yeah, if all right, depression all right, so that, is completely different because depression, it affects uh, your eating. It affects um, your talking to anybody for prolonged time periods. Uh, and you you have been prone to having depression in your life. Yes. If you don't want to go there, I get it. But I just, um, I'm just saying, was it in your life as a general? I've learned. Uh, I've had really bad depression at certain points, and um, learned how to cope, how to know how to know when it's coming on. That's all we and need to learn how to back. That, that's all we can, we don't have to go there if we don't have to. Uh, so now, you've never really had depression, no, that I know of. So, all right. So now I know that it's you're a, not gonna you're not gonna a, off yourself. I will tell you, it it's that's a dark place. Depression. Um, you always feel like you just there's nothing there. Kind it's. Of thing, or? I, I see it with. Um, it's weird. I didn't have depression with my mother. I had it coming on. But I was able to control it. All right. Well, I mean, again, I'm just asking a difference. We're not really getting into depression. No, no. That's but a it's completely a completely different conversation. I, we had a debate. Uh, not a debate. We had a conversation on. You remember Mama Fox? Mama Fox. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep, so yep. she, on her stream, she always asks a question. And she's running a big thing for anxiety and for depression. Oh, well. Because she's. She throw, pers- throw it out. They give people her address and whatnot. Uh, or, or yeah, if you go. Actual personal address. I'll put it in uh, <laughs> I'll put it in the description. But if you if you search on Twitch, twitch.com slash mama, M O M M A, Fox, F O X, Fire, F I R E, um, you'll find her. Really great woman. She's a gamer. But while she does her gaming, she talks about certain things. And depression is a big thing because she sees it nowadays with kids. She has it herself or has had it at some point. And we we talked about it. It's it's a dark, disgusting virus. It's it's a it, it's a thing that just puts a cloud on everything that you do. And if you don't learn to cope with it or or get the better half of it, it I mean it can kill you. It, it that's mm-hmm. no joke. I, I mean I'm not I'm not knocking it. I know I know depression can put you into a completely different state of mind and. Well, again, I don't. I don't want to stay on that. Anxiety is where we were. Let's stay there for right now. Keep it in that lane. Sure. So I'm going to switch gears a little bit. All right. Um, now, honestly, uh, I'm in a perfect example of what one does versus another does. Now, uh, my wife is seeing a doctor, whereas Nathan has already stated he has not seen a doctor. Mm-hmm. So, um, now your your idea of taking care of the situation is to have a particular type of medication used when the anxiety Last gets case too scenario. much. Like the absolute, I'm going to snap. Yeah, and my, my wife is on a, uh, a, a regimen. Uh, what what'd you say it was? A um, something regimen. Uh, I'm on a continuous medication. A continuous medication. It's called something, though, is uh, the way they're doing it. It's uh, a maintenance. Yes. Like a controlled substance. 
Not a controlled not, substance, but it's a maintenance med. It's a, it's called maintenance med. So maintenance med is you take it on a daily or weekly or whatever the case basis, mm. and it, it maintains your whatever level of of chemical that is offset in your body, um, and it just it's a maintenance. You know, it's kind of like uh, you get your hair cut once a month. That yeah. You're maintaining your hair, kind of scenario. Okay. Mm. Okay. So, my question to both of you is is um, you both deal with it on a daily basis. How do you, one, uh, remove it from your daily scenario? Or maybe not remove it. Right, that's not the right word. How do you minimize it? How do you make it less? Do you Like you were saying in the last podcast, uh, your girlfriend will let you sing before you go to a <laughs> place before. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, it's, it's a great example of getting your mind off of one thing and putting it onto something else. Yeah. Um, but... In that scenario, it's it's a one off kind of thing. But what do you do on the days that you're not with her? When you're when you're working, you know, you said you removed yourself. You're going to back end yeah. and whatever the case is. I get that. But what do you do for yourself? So, anything that re- that uh, completely numbs my mind. So whether it's I had a stressful day at work and I'm really anxious about something, I will get in the car. I will have. The sunroof open, all my windows down, blaring something, and just rocking out the whole way home to try to flip it. All right, or, so you do the same exact thing that you would do with her. Yeah. If, okay. if on the other side, if it's anxiety caused at home, all right, I get on a game and play a useless, pointless game like Rocket League, okay. where that has nothing. I it, it just does nothing but numbs this. Okay, so it keeps your mind off of what it is that you're depressed or not depressed, but anxious about. Yeah. All right, and uh, let me ask you the same question. What do you do on a daily basis? Now, m- my wife, I said this earlier, she likes to, she has this uh, coloring book. Uh, well, it's, it's an online coloring book that does different colors, and, and it's, it's like a, it's an OCD's world kind of thing where it's, it's different numbers, different letters, and you just, you just click, 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 and it's always the same color. It's always whatever, and it makes pictures for her, and it calms her down. That's one thing that you do, but what else do you do when you don't have that ability? That's like a mindless thing, like he's saying, like making your mind numb. Okay. Um, but if I'm at work and I'm anxious, a lot of the times I take from you and I make cracks, wise cracks. Does it, does it help? Yes, because I get the laughs from my coworkers and that makes me feel better. Okay, so you, you, you're internally turning it into a laughable moment. Yeah, like we always like when, when something happens with us, we always try to make the best out of a situation. That's that's life. That's do you have you uh, do. do you have problems sleeping? I do. Like that's, I can't, and it, my father says this, and it, it, every time I've told him, I'm like, you're, you're gonna make me go insane. He looks at me and he'll go, "You have problems sleeping?" I said, "Yeah." Well, just just shut your brain off. You can't. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It, it's, where's the switch? Is it on my back? I don't. But the thing is funny because Patrick does the exact same thing. He can take. He can say, "I'm going to bed." Five minutes later, he's out. Well, I say, "I'm going to bed," and I take. A, I do take a medicine to yeah. sleep, and sometimes that medicine doesn't work. In it my brain, me, I can't shut my brain off. I get in my bed at twelve o'clock at night. I, I go to sleep at like one thirty-two. See, in my world, uh, think of a think of a light switch. Okay. I don't let anything in my world go to my sleeping world. It doesn't happen. I, God, I, I wish I could own your psyche exactly. for like a week. I'm jealous of him sometimes because he'll be having a full-on conversation next day. I know because he's snoring. Between the emotion, not emotionless. Uh, but but I, I don't have emotion to damn near anything I do. Yeah, but. I it, shut that off a long time ago as, as a priority. Understand, the emotion of my life is not there. I I have removed almost all yeah, aspects I don't, dude, of it. I don't know how how like I wish Be- because I it was a it was at the time that I had to shut it off. It was a uh, a reaction to life. It needed to be gone. Yeah, it was a defensive mechanism. Thank you. I, I know you were thinking of it. Um, but but I'm okay with it. I I don't put emotion into anything I say or do. I, I, you know, and people would say, oh, that's a terrible way of living your life. No, not at all. So, it, like, when you got married, right? I told her she looked like a whore and we stared at her boobs. That's a God's honest. That's because my makeup was too much. That means you were nervous. No, not at all. She looked like a whore and we like looked you at her could, boobs. Like, it wasn't, like, you didn't cry or cry. Like, why would anybody cry at a wedding? Because it's probably the most important day of their life. Wrong. The first day of your life is the most important day. The rest of it is just shit that happens until you die. No. 
Yes! You are fucking psychotic. Not See, at all. See, I was fine till my dad grabbed my arm and asked me if I was ready. Then I started crying. You gotta be... Why? <laughs> okay. I gotta ask. What is so emotional about being married to somebody? So, my buddy Scott, when he got married, I was DJing his wedding. His wife... Well, that's why he was crying. His wife Terrible walked by music. me on the way to the altar in the backyard. She walked by me, and she looked me in the eyes, and she goes, How do I look? I was like... <laughs> <laughs> I broke. But you don't you don't feel that you're over emotional? I have a question. I will admit I'm over. I have a question for you. Emotional. Sure. You say your your day you first started to live was when you first li- when you were first born. Okay. What about when you saw your kids born? Cuz you were there for all three of them. I was not overly emotional. I was happy that they were there. The only one I will give you that I was crazy emotional about cuz I actually thought he was going to die was my middle son. Because I was unaware. Cause he was born with a hole in his... Um, he gave himself a, a pneumothorax, which is a hole in his lung. And, and the story, I think I've he told it on He gave it to here. himself? Yeah, well, he well, took too big of a breath and popped a hole in his lung. But I think I actually told the story, and I could be wrong. When he was born, he gave himself what she said, pneumo, whatever it was. <laughs> they immediately took him away. He was gone. And when he came back, he was in a pram that was sealed, and nobody could touch him. And uh, understand that... In my world, I am not used to fast-paced things. I do what I do, and it's at a particular pace, and that's all there is to it. In this particular situation, she was still on the table doing whatever she was doing. Um, they brought him back in, and then this jackass woman came in, and she's on, on the pram going, Are you still alive in there kind of thing? And, and this, I mean, the, the, the fucking doctor stopped and went, oh, let's go have a conversation. Grabbed the woman like this out and started screaming at her. Like, you don't say that in the fucking room, you idiot. So nobody was explaining to me what was happening. All I know is that he was born, he was gone, he came back. Are you alive in there? And what were you, ex- I'm sorry, what were you experiencing? Like, I, I was, I, th- there was no time for emotion. See, that's just the point. There was no emotion. I was concerned because... What am I going to do if he's dead? What am I going to... Okay, now I got to... In my mind... And I mean, it's probably the closest to anxiety that I could think of because I wasn't cracking jokes at the time. No. Uh, was, uh, okay, what am I going to tell my older son? That's him dancing right there. You're, la, la, you were la, helpless. La, la, la. So what am I going to tell my older son if he's gone? Now I got to deal with this woman who's bleeding on a bed in front of me trying to calm her down. My only defense was to offset the loss to everybody else. I didn't understand what was happening because I just wasn't, I, I wasn't in that world. So, in terms of... Dude, you'd e- be great in the military. How did you feel when you went into the NICU and you saw him hooked up all to the wires and monitors and an IV and everything? I was, um, I was not concerned anymore. I was, okay, he's alive, he's here, it's going to suck if he does pass, but at least he's here right now, I could tell her... And Joe and, and everybody else, he's here, we're good, and we'll, we'll build off of it. As far as I can remember, and you can quote me if I'm wrong, I've never been, Wow. oh, God, is he's going to die, I can't live my life. I, I've never been that guy. No. And I've had to live, and understand, Nathan, you, and Lynn, you guys both have got to understand, uh, my, my mother and, and father tried their best, but they were terrible parents. I mean, they just were. Uh, they were very much about themselves, um, and they still are to this day. And I, it, But they're my parents, so I will respect them enough to not blaspheme them, but understand I got handed a fuck you stick from a very young age. Uh, my brother's the same way. Uh, we all deal with it a particular way, and, and that's it. That's all there is to it. Now, that being said, my life revolved around everybody else getting their way. Everybody needed to be happy but me. I needed to just deal with it until it was said and done. So uh, my life is exactly that. I deal with it until it's said and done. I don't care if I die tomorrow. I just know that I'm not going to have to deal with it tomorrow. Okay. You know, I I don't dwell. (laughs) Wow. What? I mean, how? it's not a hard way to look at life. No, I think the problem is it's the easiest way. But why wouldn't you take the easiest way? Because sometimes easy isn't the best the, way. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, you know what? Hey, who cares, Pat? A couple years you're gonna die anyways, right? I'm not gonna care if you go. No. Are you no, kidding no, but, me? I can't but, think like that. But I also have the mindset that while I'm here, I'm gonna do the best I can 
and get as far as I can. So I know when I go, I did the best I could. I don't ever stop and contemplate whether I'm doing the best. If I know that said, I'm not. I envy you, man. It, you, there's no reason to envy me. You just weren't raised that way. I Neither of you were. See, you both come from. And, and you know your mom and, and and father loved each other. They might have not lived together as you stated, but no. They still and I, loved got, each I other. totally got a sheltered and, life. And, and she comes from a family exactly the same way, except they lived together. You guys both had loving relationships with each of your parents. My real father kicked the living shit out of me and my brother, and fucked my mother up to the point where we weren't there anymore and then the last time i spoke to the gentleman he tried to bribe me with the dirt bike so i wouldn't be with my mother that was the very last time i spoke to him then when my stepfather came into my life it was what it was and it became a very selfish world for my mother and stepfather they did the best they could to make sure that we were good but ultimately it was about my mother and stepfather it still is to this day yeah so and i don't i don't put myself in that situation i try to not live that life, and and that's where my mindset is. You know, I probably have some kind of underlining uh, issue in my life too that's not related to anxiety. I get that, yeah, but you, no, you got the thing is, is everything you've done and the person you are today is because of what happened to you when you were younger. Oh, that a doubt. Okay, and, and I don't. And, and this is the point. I'm glad it happened. Of I, I'm I, no. Yes, I'm, I'm well, glad I, it happened. I, that's good for you. I'm not happy that I'm happened. glad that my life sucked the way it did because I wouldn't be who I am today for. And then it also made you know what you didn't want to do with your children. You're absolutely right. Now I look at everybody, anybody in their life, and you guys can you guys can put me in a soapbox or whatever the case is. Understand, ladies and gentlemen, you might have the shittiest fucking life in the world. You might be beaten every day. You might be treated like shit. You might be thrown in a gutter and left to die. If you survive, you get your ass up, you shake off, and you realize that you're the person you are because of the life you got handed you. And you alone, you only, you, have the ability to change your life. It ha Nobody else can change it for you. If you don't like the way your life is going, fucking stop, turn around, and start over again. You know, I, that's my mindset. And you guys say, well, you don't have emotion. I don't need emotion because if I don't like the way my life is going, I'm going to change it. I appreciate everything that you've done for me. I'm talking to my wife. I'm not looking at Nate. It's going to get weird. <laughs> the sex that we had. No. <laughs> no that um, was me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, now I'm looking at Nate. So anyway, everything you've done for me has made my life better. You've made me into the person that I want to be, and I will never discount that because of that. But understand, if our life does not work out, I'm going to change my life to something else and be happier for myself. I know that I tried. I know that the past 24 years, we've tried. If we don't make it 25, I'm okay with it because we tried. Mm -hmm. See, that's the difference between me and everybody else. See, you sit there and you go, well, I can't have your lifestyle. You have my lifestyle. You just go a little bit further than I do. You try your hardest to make your life happen. You don't have the guiding post that you used to have, but you still have a guiding post. You have you. You need to stop dwelling on the past, stop dwelling on the possibilities, and realize that your life is yours and yours alone. You don't want to go to that fucking restaurant, don't go to that fucking restaurant. You don't want to eat what they got there, don't eat it. That's your life. But if you want to make a difference, you want to be that person in charge of your life, take a chance. What's the worst that happens? Nate, don't cry. He's yelling at you. No, it's not. <laughs> what I'm, I'm asking both of you. What's what, the worst that happens? I, I get that. I, I think. And that's where the anxiety portion of my world stops because I don't dwell on it. I, I never have. I think the difference is, is that the average person who didn't have a fucked up childhood. All right. Uh, ca cares about the opinions and thoughts of other people. Why? Because even if it was bad, those people are still a part of your life. Those people are only a part of your life because of necessity, not because they need to be. That's where I think I disagree. No. Think about it this way. Let's, let's rewind the clock 25 years. Just rewind the clock 25 years, and your father decided not to be a part of your life. Yep. How would that change your life today? That's different. 
No, it's not. Yes, it's it the is. exact same possibility. No, it's not. It's completely different because he would be at the My point is if my father, who is a part of my life, which again I, I love the fact that he is. I'm just saying. Told me tomorrow, Nathan, you are the you are my biggest mistake. At which point I'd say, great, you pay the cable bill. So if he said something <laughs> like that, that would break me mentally. Why? Like, because I'm his child. That doesn't matter. You're bullshit. You. They, you're you. Oh, dude, see that's where we differ. I, I that's that's. Have you? Where, hey, how many years you've been a salesman? How many years? 16 years. Did your father have any hand in that at all? Yeah. What? He's the one that taught me how to break out of my shell and talk to people. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about being a salesman. Was he there? No. Was he the one who won you those awards? Was he the one no, of who course forced not. you to go and be cosmic? Of course not. No, the no. The man I am today isn't, it isn't finalized because of my father, but I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for my father. See, that's... Okay, so I'm supposed to respect and love the real father that I've had in my life? I mean, that's the point I'm no, trying to make to you. No, the, What I'm saying is the father that's a part of my life, if he said something hurtful tomorrow, it will hurt, but he's still my father, and I will still keep him a part of my life till his dying day. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, you and I have very different beliefs in that world because of course. my real father has not been a part of my life for years. Yes. But he never made me. He never did anything to make me who I am. He just made me. That's correct. Just but like, you, had... just like you, you have the belief that all these people made you into who you are, and that's not the case. They're just a part of your life because they're a part of your life. Your sister, who is a lovely woman, who has a great, personality and, and a, a great outlook on life to you know seize the moment has nothing to do with who you are as a person and that's the hard truth right there my wife has nothing to do with who i am as a person except for the fact that she gave me a guiding post to go down a particular road yeah i see i disagree with that no uh, you're Outside of her pointing me in a direction that I wanted to be in, it was my choice to be who I am. But I take from every experience, life experience I have with anybody, I've I've learned something from. I've taken something from. But I, like I've had, uh, we'll say exes that have mentally screwed me up, that tre treated me a certain way, or didn't want this, or didn't want that. All those things have led me to find the person that didn't have those qualities or this quality and taught me how to be a certain way. But again, you decided to go, and this is where I think you and I are different. You decided to take the qualities that you didn't like and switch them to the qualities that you did like to find the right person. Yes, yes. Now, I give you that they had a hand in it, but they had nothing to do with you deciding what you wanted. But the thing is, is you did the same thing because you know how your parents were to you and your real father was to you. Oh, and right. that made you a better father because you didn't want to be like that to your own but children. But I did it for myself. I didn't do it because somebody was in my life. I, True story. I, I see. And that's, that's the difference I think that we have here. Now, I'm not discounting your lifestyle, Nate. I'm not at all. I agree that you have your own beliefs and you do your own thing. But my point to you is, if everybody in your life right now were to leave tomorrow, you'd still be Nathan, who I know today. Yes, but I, I think something that we we, we just mentioned uh, prior to the show, we were talking outside, is I think you look at people as a person, while I look at certain people with a title. Yeah, I don't. I don't look at anybody outside of who that person like is. Like my father's a person, but he's my father. I don't judge anybody outside of the way they act and who they are if i think you're an asshole i'm going to openly tell you you're an asshole if i think that you're a good person i'm going to try my hardest to be a good person to you i'm not going to dwell on the fact that you have 14 baby daddies or the fact that you've at one point stole 50 dollars from somebody i don't give a fuck about that so either. do you live the possible the life live um treat the people the way you want to be treated for the most part there are certain people in my life that I've tried time and again to offset that, but I, I just can't get past it. And I, I've, I've completely... And you're not willing to overlook it because they have a certain title? No, I'm not overlooking it because time and again that I've given them the option to be a de better person, they've completely turned it around and fucked me over again and again and so again. So I'll use, I'll use my sister, right? I have a great relationship with oh, yeah. my sister now. 
if tomorrow my sister said, I hate you and I don't want to see you unless it's these certain things. What I would say at that point is, I love you to death. If you want to talk about it, I'm here. I understand. I'll respect your boundaries. But I don't have these problems with you. I don't know what the issue is. I don't sure. know what happened. I'm going to respect it because I love you. Mm-hmm. My, I'm, I'm always open to talk to you. I'm not here so, to judge. So at what point? Because like that's exactly how I would handle it. Because right. I would never want to lose my my sister out of my life. So let's say. But let's just say you guys have that falling out, and then a year from now it happens again, and a year from now it happens again, and it's never you. It's always something that that happened on her end. Mm-hmm. At what point do you stop and go? I'm fucking done. I don't. I would care. never. You don't. You don't see, I would never because it's my blood. I see that. And I will. I I will try to. Be my, I will try. And try for it, and th- so th- and for me, it's a moral thing. Like you know how you said you got to do things for you. Oh, yeah. For me, I would do it for me because this way, if something, God forbid, ever happened to her, I can be like, I tried all the way to leave. But, but that's but not that's I- not moral. That's you trying to be the bigger man. But how many times can you get knocked down and try to come back up? It. This is gonna sound stupid, but it depends on the the person. If exactly. It was, if it was my father. A million and one times. Exactly. But yeah, but what happens if your father openly lied to you time and time and time and time again? He's my father. I see, and, and that's that, where we differ. That's where we very much. I don't care if you're my father, my brother, my sister, my. I, cousin. I know people who had, uh, you know, alcoholic fathers, who beat the living hell out of them growing up. And will still love them till the day they die you know, because belie- they're their father. Believe it or not, there is there is a scenario in that situation where you have a negative person in your family or in your life that you have to openly be a part of it. It's uh oh, fuck, what's it called when somebody kidnaps you? Stockholm syndrome. The Stockholm syndrome. That's an honest to goodness thing. It has nothing to do with being. Uh, it doesn't have to be where somebody kidnaps you. Yeah. So I mean. And that's not to say that you have Stockholm Syndrome. And I'm not saying that anybody in your family is, is that way. But my point is is I don't subscribe to the the belief that you have to give somebody in your family a thousand that? chances I'm before. Chill. You know, now, here, here's the point. Now, you're saying you're old man. What happens if you're old man tomorrow? This is a great example, and we'll get off of this. What happens if your old man tomorrow approaches your girlfriend, hits on her, and then your girlfriend decides to leave because she's geeked out that your dad did that. We would have we would have exchange of words and there would probably be a time period where we wouldn't talk. But he's still my father. Oh uh, well, I mean, we're going to leave it at that. I'm not going to dwell on it cuz this is a this is just like talking about religion. Let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. It, you know, that's why I think it's a good reason that we had these these talks is because you know, j- people people look at us and w- they think we're very similar, but we have different views on different things. No, it's definitely related to how we r- were raised. And, yeah. and understandably, I was raised in a way that, you know, you take care of yourself. You got to get yourself fixed. You got to do what you got to do. And that's just a lifestyle. And, and you know, you, you've come from a different lifestyle directly related to, you know, you had a constant figure in your life that was not. <laughs> part of this family <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you know and, and it sucks but you know what are you gonna do I, I i don't i don't discount anything that my mother and father have done i'm gonna stress that right now they lived their life they gave me a roof they gave me a place if it wasn't for them i would have never met my wife honestly so when push comes to shove i thank them for the way they raised me but they did do a shitty job let's face it and the whole point of uh, folks, the, the whole point why we went on this tangent completely off the topic is it full circle. This is why I don't like, have anxiety. Exactly. This is why Pat <laughs> manages to be, we'll say, self sufficient enough and not have the anxiety issues that other people do. Uh, and that's probably why, uh, Pat, why you said earlier, I, I think it was episode one, that you thought it was. People have anxiety based on their upbringings. So yeah, you're absolutely right. And uh, I, I've already said I'm sorry. I, I was wrong. No, but I can understand why someone like yourself, you're like, okay, I grew up like this. I made this situation. Why the fuck would I have anxiety? I've, you know, I make my own choices. Well, the thing is, is I, I think, and you just hit it on the head right there. I think I am my own person. 
Yeah. I have lived my life knowing that I can handle almost everything that gets thrown at me. Good, bad, or otherwise, I'm always there to work on me. Um, and I always look for the best in people. Whether or not I want to is, is a different story, but I try to look for the best in people. Um, and both of you, I know, were not raised that way. You guys were both raised in a way that you didn't have to rely on your own personal cognizance to survive. You didn't have to be you, – you always had somebody to fall back on. There was always somebody there to help you along the way, whether it be a lot or a little bit or whatever the case was. There was somebody there that – I'm not going to say hold your hand and move you along, but to the very least, they gave I you – I can understand why you would say that, though. They gave you a direction – and you were able to go at your own pace and make it happen. Is that is that fair to say? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So made you go for a walk but gave you the shoes. There, <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Shit's deep. Oh my god. So let me let me uh and this is the, this is going to be the last part of this but uh let me ask you both in closing how would you tell somebody who is going through these situations who's never been clinically told that they have anxiety or, or, or they're showing signs of this. How would you deal with these particular people in trying to get them, pushing them into the right direction, um, knowing that you each have a anxiety, knowing that you each have this, this problem? Um, like myself, how I dealt with it with my wife was, we're going to get divorced if you don't fucking get this fixed. Yeah. That was a bad way of doing it. I, I will say for me, because I'm not going to say do medication because... I'd be a hypocrite. Um, I will say for me, find somebody in your life, friend, what, a family member, whatever, whoever that you're close enough to that you can trust and express to them. So this way, if they're in a situation, especially with other friends, we'll say if you tell one friend and they're in other, you're out, you know, they're out with other friends of yours and they're like, hey, why is Nate a psycho when it comes to going to restaurants? You can be like, well... You know, and it's a, le- a little easier to explain, and not to mention th- it, they can understand you better. No, I get it, but how would you ask them to? Well, you, you're talking like just talking about the different, like what we did here. Or? Yeah, you need to know, like, how the hell are you going to know? Like, if I like, were to you tell really you right know. now, Nate, just hearing what you talk today, you need to be hospitalized. If I were- <laughs> and I, and I'd say, uh, no. <laughs> no, but I mean, just just hearing what she was saying, would would you entice maybe going to talk to a doctor or whatever the case is? Oh, I totally need to talk to somebody. You do? all right? So you're under the impression that you have to. I a hundred and thirty percent need to talk to somebody. It's and was this an eye opening experience today? Was um, this something that would? Help? I wouldn't say eye opening. I think it made it more comfortable. Oh, well, there you um, go. I, but it definitely needs I, – I know I need to talk to somebody, but after my last experience of going to talk to somebody, oh, yeah. which you know, I, I need to find somebody that's right. I know oh, a right a match. I would never tell you to go just to a random um, dude. Look, and this guy lives in the back of an alley. He's great. Yeah, because there's <laughs> – and that's – for people out there who are looking uh, for a psychiatrist or a psychologist, not everyone's going to be a perfect fit the first time. Just like in that first incident in episode two when he gave us the the car dealership thing. There are some out there who try to force things down your throat and try to force you to believe that this is... Find somebody... That happened who, one time and you said you could take it. <laughs> find somebody that meshes with you, that you oh, yeah. click with, that you're comfortable with, that, uh, that can understand you. Because if you can't, you're never going to be able to open up. And if you can't open up... Or then you'll never be able to get prescribed the right thing, or or concentrate on working on yourself. That's they 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 uh, also have to like escape rooms. Yes. Escape and rooms so are awesome. uh, the the final word is going to be from my lovely lady friend. Oh boy, anxious. Look at her hands going. No. <laughs> uh, so you have been going to counseling for uh, about ten years now. Um, how do you handle people who you know need to go? Um, do, do you, I mean, if have they ever approached you? Have you, I mean, what would you do in these situations? I've had some people that have come up to me and said, some people don't realize that I even have anxiety. I got you. They don't understand when I tell them I'm on anxiety. They're like, really? You do? I'm like, yeah. But, are, you, are you open about it? I mean, I know you are now, obviously, <laughs> but like. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very open about it. Um, I just talk to them from my ex- own experience. And uh, do you know of anybody that's physically gone because you've had these conversations or. Yes. 
Oh, well. Uh, so, I mean, ult ultimately, the, the goal here is to have an open and honest conversation with people to not only make them comfortable with you, but to understand that you're coming from a, a, a place that, that, you know, you've had to go through. You've already done it. That the, what is it they say? That the hardest part is the first steps every mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's, that's the goal here, ultimately, people. I, I guess out of three episodes, the goal is simple. You, you've just heard from two different people that both have anxiety. Both of them have almost identical issues with different scenarios. And, you know, they're both telling you that, you know, talk to people. And none of this, by the way, uh, was talked about prior. No, not at so, all. So it's not like me and Lynn got together and we're like, okay, hey, so if it's something, you know, when he asked this question, we, you know, we shared. No, there was no, none if of that. You guys no, I came down to change the laundry over. <laughs> and he forced the microphone in her face. If you, guys, if you guys listen from the very first episode of these three episodes, you'll know that literally halfway through the first episode, she just came down and we... We just started having a conversation, and I got a bunch of new mics and headphones and whatnot, so I wanted to try them out. What can I tell you? I'm I'm weird like that. Kid in a candy store. Uh, it truly, but it works out well. And um, I know that this particular topic, with at least my family, is very personal. Um, and you know, I, I can't justify enough to anybody out there that thinks that this is a bad thing. Having anxiety or depression or any of that it's not a bad thing yeah but every the, the problem is is nowadays a lot of people think they're in, uh, untouchable they're impenetrable and that they are just perfect in every little way and, and they're if, wrong they're not and nobody <laughs> unfortunately nobody is not even this kid pat over here who seems to think he's perfect but the I, other no, thing no, absolutely is... i know see and this is the difference i know i'm not fucking perfect at all yeah you fucking shit failures <laughs> well, I, well i'm pissing excellence <laughs> But the other thing is, is people also think that just taking a pill is going to help the anxiety. No, you have to be able to talk about it too. No, and yeah. and what a lot of people don't understand is that they have to get the right medication and the right problems uh, and the right what, dosage. What yes. happened when she first got on medication? It took almost two years to get the right correct the, amount. The right of... correct, and, and, <laughs> and you know, to end on a, on a on a much more funny note is. When I started giving a well, funny note because my wife's mental acuity was way off, um, what happened was is that cer certain days she would be all over the fucking spectrum. It was funny as hell because I'd walk and she'd go, ah! what happened? Ah! You know, and then the next day <coughs> she'd be fucking screaming at me while I'm sleeping, you know. <laughs> so I can see all these things probably having logical reasons why she did all no. of them. <laughs> She's talking to herself in the bathroom with the lights off. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? I, do I got to get a knife? What's going on? <laughs> so the, the point is, is um, talk to people. Talk to people. Feel comfortable with the people you talk to. Um, you don't have to start out with going to a doctor. You could talk to people who have it. I'm sure they have groups and, and, and online chats with, with the same people that you can you know, feel more comfortable with. Whatever you do, do not diagnose yourself, Nathan. Um, Thank you. When you do that, you start to do stupid shit like take medication that you probably should. Yeah, taking. don't ever like I've never prescribed medication to myself. Um, the only thing that I've learned and this it took a long time to finally get is know where you are on the spectrum. Yes, he's very, very low on the spectrum. What I mean by that is what you spectrum need, <laughs> you, you need to know <laughs> when you're at that point where you're like, yep. I need to talk to somebody now. But Don't. see, at one point, I didn't realize he was the one who put me in check. Well, yeah, because you were a mental case. Yes. <laughs> oh, she, she, I'll, I'll, she'll openly admit to it now. Back in the day, it was very hard. Oh, yeah, I can I'm imagine. I'm not going to lie to you. When you have people who just don't understand that they're having problems, like when you, when you openly see, like the best part is, is that the heavy drug users, where, you know, I don't, I don't have a problem, I don't have a problem, I don't, I don't, you know, and it's like, dude, you're obviously got a fucking problem. You know, the one I like the most is the people who smoke pot in the car. Uh, this is a great example of what I'm talking about, where they drive by you and they fucking reek. Or when, you know, people who don't smoke will walk into a room with smokers. It's openly obvious that you have a problem, you've been smoking, you've been doing whatever the case is, but you don't recognize it. Well, that's because, and I say this a lot for a bunch of different situations people are scared or people are hate what they don't understand it's and they also don't want to be put in front of a microscope and told that something's yeah. wrong with them 
I get it. I'm not here to argue that fact, folks. Welcome to the seven months of doing podcasts with Pat. Yeah, right? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, folks, I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you enjoy our special guests. I'm hoping to get her down here for a few more. Maybe not today, but definitely another day. Um, and, uh, I mean, how'd you enjoy it? Did you like it? Yeah. You did. Yeah. I'm glad that you were here. Maybe we can get another lady friend down here and we can have another I discussion. I already mentioned it to her. Um, and, uh, you know, I'd like to thank everybody for listening for this epic three podcast mini series. Yes. About anxiety, depression, and obviously me being a fucking tool because I don't feel the way they do. Uh huh. Those people. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Nathan, uh, I appreciate you opening up for this. Mm-hmm. And, um,. We end this the same way every time, except I'm going to switch it up. Uh-oh. Lynn, how are you feeling today? Tired. <laughs> ah, for the, I love it. <laughs> for the Nothing out of the ordinary since I've <laughs> known this woman. <laughs> She's been every time I've seen her. How you doing? Tired. Uh, she could have, you know, she probably slept 15 hours a day too, and that's why she's tired. No, I always, had, I was up early today. I always had this conversation with her when she sleeps through the entirety of the day. She goes, "I'm tired," because you slept six days in a row today. No, <laughs> you know? I'm not always like that. <laughs> no, but when you are, it's it's funny because, baby, you, you literally slept 12 hours. How are you not not tired? It's, I mean, it takes a lot of work to sleep. Does it? Not really. Yeah, sure it does. Yeah, have you ever I noticed? I also work off shifts, so leave me alone. Ha- have you guys ever noticed that if you sleep maybe three hours longer than you normally sleep, you wake up tired? You, yes. Yeah, there's a, well, so there's a, I was doing, oh, that's another podcast. Yeah, right. We're going to end this one because yep. we, we can make this four hours. And yep. I know she wants to go read her smut, mu- uh, her smut books. I call them smut books. It's the uh, adult reading for ladies that they do. I call it the Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm sure they got a Smut Avengers that you could probably watch, uh, read rather. No. Well, oh, you could probably find one. Anyway, folks, thank you so very Thor much for your time. <laughs> uh, I'm going to let Lynn close this out. You say whatever you want to say right now. Bye. And that was it. Okay, <laughs> I good. said bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Love you. Bye-bye. Toodles. Hey, folks, that was the show. Now, here's the routine. Nate? You can reach us over at fatguysquared at gmail.com. You can watch us on YouTube and Twitch. Hit us up on Facebook and Twitter. And, of course, like and subscribe to us on podbean.com, iTunes, and Android. Take it easy.